Many parents wonder why refeed instead of just insist that their child eat enough food on their own. The answer is threefold. First, refeeding is compassionate. Second, refeeding is usually necessary. And third, refeeding is efficient. I realized how much stress it was choosing what to eat for my daughter. I was coming home from Europe. We were on a plane, and she had only eaten one salad. And we had a stopover in Chicago, and I told her she had to eat something when we got to Chicago. When we got there, we were looking for a subway. She wanted whole wheat. We couldn't find a subway. We went through maybe 30 different restaurants trying to find one that had the acceptable bread for her. We couldn't find one. She refused to eat anything that didn't fit her specific uh, requirements. I was frustrated. She hadn't eaten. I was scared. I was angry. And I demanded that she eat something before we get on the plane. She looked at me and she said, I hate you. I will never forgive you for forcing me to do that. But I held firm. I said, you are going to eat something before we get on that plane. She couldn't do it. Finally, she turned to me and she said, Dad, you pick something and I will eat it. Every aspect of eating, including what to eat, is intensely stressful for an anorexic. Having parents choose and plate food independent of their anorexic child input can actually take away the stress from the child. Some compare anorexia to cancer and refeeding to chemotherapy. If your child had cancer and needed chemotherapy, yet feared the pain and suffering and consequences of chemo, you would nonetheless compassionately support him or her through the process. Think of eating as your child's chemotherapy or medicine for anorexia. With our daughter, we gave goals for calorie intake and she would fight them. We plated the food, we set it in front of her, she would fight us, but we would say, this is your medicine and you need to take it. She would continue to fight, but we remained with her and calmly supported her in what needed to happen. And at a certain point, she seemed relieved that we were there to give her the support and also the instruction. Your child's brain and every body organ is being affected by malnutrition. Your child is very unlikely to be able to refeed without your help. Sufficient calorie intake and weight is necessary for a healthy body and brain. Right now, your child's brain patterns are destructive. They've gone down the same restrictive neural pathway so many times that restriction has become the default. Something like, when stressed, restrict what I eat. Eating is stressful, restrict even more. Your refeeding helps your child override the destructive anorexic neural pathways that have been built up over time. It's the idea that you want to pull that brain out of the, you know, sort of the wrong marinade to bring it back on track into a more, you know, normal developmental uh, circumstance. Because of his or her restriction, your child's metabolism has slowed down. It's gone into survival mode, somewhat like a bear in hibernation. As a bear comes out of hibernation, it needs a lot of food to move its body from a slowed metabolism to a normal one. Similarly, your child will eventually need more calories than what most people his or her age and size need, sometimes nearly double what a peer may eat. Because of Ed's dictatorial power over your child, your choosing foods and calorie intake will help your child recover much more efficiently and quickly. Although most parents choose to plate their children, Parents working with professionals may individually tailor refeeding to their child's needs and family circumstances. Refeeding and not allowing your child to exercise can seem brutal. It may seem to all of you that you are taking over your child's life. Remember, your child is ill and the illness has made it that he or she cannot choose wisely about what to eat and how much to exercise. 